Okay, so let's start. Um, our next our next speaker is Pascal uh, Pascal Barakia, who is a, a co-worker of Dominique, who Dominique who um, spoke earlier today. Um, he's based in Zurich, in Switzerland, uh, which is a multilingual country, and uh, he's been working with WordPress for half of his life half of his life, uh, focusing especially in improving WordPress internationalization to make the web a better place. Today, he will be sharing how to make use the latest and greatest technology to make your WordPress plugin or theme free internationalized. Please welcome Pascal. All right, uh, so as he already mentioned, uh, today is all about the different ways of making your WordPress plugin or theme uh, translatable, and especially uh, the workflow around this. Um, I will be tweeting uh, slides afterwards, so this is my Twitter handle where you can follow me, uh, or just check for when I tweet my slides. Um, so obviously this talk is about internationalization in WordPress. Uh, over the years, WordPress has steadily proved the way we work with internationalization. And overall, it does a very good job at this. And however, challenges still exist, and there are lots of things that we can make better, and uh, should make better. And in this talk, we will look uh, at improving the internationalization workflow in particular, and I'll try to split things up into three topics. So first, uh, we're going to look at the bare basics of how internationalization works in WordPress, and the history of that relationship. Um, these things, they don't change, uh, no matter what, in, what your individual workflow looks like. Um, and Dominic talked about, a bit about this in the morning, and in case you want some deeper insights and have missed this talk, uh, make sure to watch the video afterwards. Uh, second, we'll look at how we can actually internationalize our WordPress plugin or theme. And um, what does it take to make our project available um, to people all around the world, no matter what the language is. And finally, we will explore how we can uh, reduce the barriers and improve existing workflows when it comes to internalization. Uh, before I start, I want to quickly explain some of the terminology in this area of topics. Um, this is about some of the terms you hear quite often in this talk, but also online talking about translations and WordPress in general. Well, first of all, uh, when I speak about internationalization, I refer to the process of creating something that can be adapted to uh, specific local languages and cultures. Um, so in other words, it's about making your project uh, translatable. But we don't actually say translation, uh, it's more precise to say localization um, because it's about making an English software like WordPress uh, work in another language like, let's say, uh, Spanish. And there are differences in Spanish, like Spanish in Mexico is different than Spanish in Spain. Um, so, in, put another way, uh, we can say that localization is like translation but with a cultural twist to it. And it's not just just about written words. Uh, it's also about things like symbols, unit, date formats, number formats, or whether you drive on the left or the right side of the street. And these things, they're all contained uh, in this little word called local. And so we're talking about localization and translation. Um, we don't refer to a language itself. It's always about locals, which contains and the region and the cultural preferences. So, uh, with this settled, I want to explore a bit of WordPress's history in this area. Um, WordPress has been internationalized for many years now, I think at least 10 years, and over 50% of all WordPress websites are non-English. So this is a really important area for the project. And without this, there wouldn't be uh, that big of an adoption. So that's why it's um, so important to take other languages 
into account when you want your WordPress, uh, when you want to use your software to be, uh, when you want your software to be used around the world. Um, internationalization was crucial for the popularity of WordPress um, because English is not the main languages in most countries, right? And as soon as WordPress added uh, support for internationalization, uh, it was quickly translated to German and Japanese and many more languages. But I think these two were first. Um, one big accelerator for this global adoption is the translation platform available on translate.wordpress.org. Um, this platform allows thousands of people to fully translate and fully localize the projects. So it's not just for WordPress, uh, but also for plugins, uh, for themes, and I think even the WordPress mobile apps can be uh, localized on this platform. Um, as Dominic mentioned in, in his talk, uh, it's built on an open source WordPress plugin called Logpress. Um, Logpress allows setting up multiple projects and translating them to, um, I think, almost 180 different locals. So basically, almost every local uh, there is. You can even translate it to Ethiopia, I think. And the good thing is WordPress.org uh, built quite a community around this uh, with thousands of translation contributors and editors. So if you publish your WordPress plugin on WordPress.org, other people can join a project and translate it for you, which is really cool. Um, and if you know uh, the free uh, translation editor called PoEdit, WordPress is basically like PoEdit, but in the browser. And it's 100% uh, open source and free. And yeah, in case you haven't heard of it, like, here are just the links if you want to look them up. One thing, um, there was a direct benefit a direct result um, of this translation platform was the introduction of language packs in WordPress. So language packs um, allow you and WordPress.org to ship translations independent, independent, independently of the software. Um, that means, A, you don't have to bundle the translations with your plugin, um, and B, when you install a plugin, so if you're in dashboard, browse uh, plugins, install it, WordPress automatically installs the needed translations for the plugin. And see, as soon as a new translation um, is available for, for your plugin, like uh, someone fixed a typo or um, added missing translations, you can install it right away. You don't have to need for the next plugin update to install the translations. It's really cool. And a big improvement we made uh, rather recently in WordPress core is that individual users can uh, choose their preferred language in the admin, in their user profile. So you go select uh, local in your user profile, and you do so <coughs> without affecting uh, the language of the whole website. And when you add a new language, WordPress will automatically uh, download and install the language pack uh, from the translate of WordPress to Um Now that uh, we have explored the role of internationalization in WordPress and the benefits of language packs, let's have a look at how these all come together um, for the benefit of WordPress plugin developers. Um, so for this, we build a little plugin, and for this example, I assume that we want to publish this plugin on WordPress.org, just like um, Jetpack or Ekismet or thousands of others. And the most basic WordPress plugin consists of a single PHP file. It's super easy, and this PHP file you can do whatever you want. And uh, for internationalization, WordPress provides a couple of uh, get text functions to make your plugin localizable. And if you want to distribute our plugin on WordPress.org, uh, all we need in addition to that PHP file is a readme, which basically is a uh, documentation for the plugin. So in the end, uh, the plugin's folder structure uh, looks a bit like this. We have a folder called My Plugin, um, which contains the main plugin file, which we easily named My Plugin PHP, and the README file. Um, 
here's a simplified version of that plugin file. It consists of some metadata like name, the version, description, the URL to the plugin. And at the bottom, just for the sake of this example, I have a single translation function. <coughs> it's one of the getFX function workers provides. Uh, in this case, the first argument is the text we want to translate, and the second uh, argument is the so-called text domain of the plugin. And here the text domain is my plugin again. Um, for workers.org, this needs to be the same as the folder name from before. So it makes it easier to be a bit consistent there. And another detail is in a readme, um, we say that this plugin requires at least WordPress 4.6. You don't really have to worry about that too much, but this is the version where some changes were made to WordPress.org and to make things easier and for the language packs. So we have our little plugin. Now we can submit it to the WordPress.org plugin directory. When we do that, uh, as soon as it gets approved and we upload our plugin, it is available uh, on WordPress.org, again with my plugin being in the URL. So my plugin is in the folder name, it's the text domain, and it's also the URL of the plugin. And as soon as we upload our plugin, we can translate it. WordPress automatically finds the text from our plugin that we want to translate, and we can tr translate it into every uh, language that we want. And of course, our users can do that as well. Now, as soon as we install our WordPress plugin uh, on our website, WordPress will automatically install the needed translations. And when new translations are available, uh, you can easily update them as well through the dashboard without having to update the plugin. There's nothing else we have to do, and uh, it just works. The plugin is fully translated. And uh, you can verify this um, by checking the languages folder inside WP content. Uh, and when installing the plugin, you'll see that uh, WordPress adds new files. Um, for this example, it's uh, the German translation for the plugin. And they're downloaded to the folder. So, Basically, we only have to do three steps. Write a plugin, publish it on WordPress.org, translate it. The rest just works. And all between these, de between these steps, uh, WordPress does everything else for you to handle the translation. What if you want to write a plugin that we don't want to publish on WordPress.org? could be a private plugin for your website, or maybe for a client, uh, and you don't want to publish anywhere. The thing is, things are getting a bit more complicated in this case. Uh, first step is always today. Like, you start by writing some PHP code. And after that, you have to do some stuff. So as I mentioned before, uh, WordPress.org automatically finds all the texts we want to translate in our plugin. Now we have to do this on our own. And this part is called string extraction. So we extract all the text from our plugin that we want to translate. Um, so for example, um, this example plugin, all the things we can translate is the plugin name, the description, even the URL, and the author information, and of course the text at the bottom. These are all things that we can um, translate. And to do this extraction, uh, there are a few tools that can help us. Uh, the oldest and perhaps most common one is called MakePod. Uh, that's the same tool that it's running on WordPress.org, and that's used for, for WordPress there. And there are also a helper script that makes it easier to use it, um, like Grunt scripts called Grunt WP i um, They also use like MakePod under the hood. And you can also use PoEdit, the editor I mentioned before, you can do that as well. Plus you can do the translation um, in PoEdit as well. So, when we do the string extraction with one of these tools, uh, we end up with a translation catalog at the end. So this is called um, myplugin.plt. 
And this file contains all the strings that we can later uh, translate. And since we're not using the WordPress org translation platform, uh, this file is not added to the WP content slash languages, but instead our plugin folder. Of course, uh, now we have to translate all these strings, but we are not on WordPress.org, so we can't use the translation platform there. Um, so we need a tool that can do this for us. Um, you can use it manually, maybe, but it won't work. Uh, so I think PoEdit is the most popular solution for this. And when you translate the plugin, for example, uh, to German, you end up with the new PO and MO files containing the translations that WordPress can read. And again, these are part of the plugin folder and not WP content. The problem is, just can't like we can't just um, add these files and see what happens. We have to tell WordPress where these files are and to load them. So for this, uh, we need a function called load plugin text domain. Uh, basically, loads all the translations from our language folder in the plugin and loads them all into memory. And whenever WordPress finds a string from the plugin uh, with this text domain, my plugin, it checks to see if uh, translation is available. So in summary, uh, we have to do lots of manual things. Uh, we run our plugin, we have to do the string extraction, we have to do manual translation. Uh, we don't benefit from the WordPress.org translator community. And also we have to manually load the translations, because before that it was done automatically. Um, so let's compare these options uh, side by side. Again, we can see that um, WordPress is able to do lots of the heavy lifting for us. And for private plugins, it's a much more complicated process. We have to worry about string extraction. Uh, there's no translation community. We have to uh, manually load the translations. And for WordPress.org plugins, we benefit from so-called just-in-time uh, loading of translations. So WordPress only loads them when they are actually needed. Makes your website a little bit faster. And we thought, and we probably thought, like, this can't be right. This can't be the solution. Um, it's not something we want for our plugins. Having so many manual steps is not sustainable when you write with dozens of private plugins for your clients. And in order to solve this problem, we came up with a solution called Traditore, which is Italian for translator. Um, and Traditore uh, is basically WordPress.org for everyone. Uh, it allows us to have the same benefits for private plugins as for public ones for the WordPress. So to be a bit more precise, uh, it works like the WordPress.org translation platform, but for your own private projects. And having our own translation platform means that we and our clients can easily <coughs> translate all the websites all the plugins uh, using the web interface as well. And it's also built on WordPress, so the same software that runs translate.works.org is also used um, for translator. So when we decided to, to build this, uh, we tried to automate it as much as possible. And right now it works like this. Uh, wherever, whenever you push changes to the plugin. So your plugin is hosted on GitHub, and, and whenever you make changes, the code gets sent to Traditore, and Traditore then does the string extraction, so it finds all the strings and sends them to uh, Bloodpress, and after that you can just translate everything uh, on the website, and as soon as you change these, trans as soon as you make translations, uh, Traditore creates a language pack, just like works with Orcas, and now when you um, install this plugin that you built and translated, it downloads the language pack from Territory. And for a string extraction, we found all the existing solutions to be very buggy and uh, inefficient. Plus, we couldn't uh, use something like PoEdit uh, for such an automated task. So that's why we decided to build our own uh, using WP CLI, which is the official uh, command line tool, uh, command line interface for WordPress. 
So this command makes it easier uh, than ever to extract strings from a WordPress plugin or theme. Uh, all you have to do is to like wp iha make pop file, uh, point it to the directory of your plugin, and optionally define the target file. And it figures out everything else, and you don't have to worry about anything. So in Traditore, we use this wp cli command to do the string extraction and send all the strings and import them, import them to WordPress. And we thought this is something that's not only useful for Traditore, but almost every WordPress developer needs this, right? And so that's why we fully open source everything uh, under the WP CLI umbrella. And now when you download uh, WP CLI, it's actually bundled uh, this command. So if you're using the latest version of WP CLI, you don't have to do anything. This just works. So after we run this WPCLI command and import the strings into Blockpress, Territory actually can notify you on Slack about the changes it made. And this way you always know what the current state of uh, your project is and when language packs are being built. So in this example, I made some changes to uh, this plugin and it said, hey, we have 85 new strings and after I did some translations, it generated new zip files and new language packs and did not fight us again. So the last step we need is uh, a way to tell WordPress, hey, I built this plugin and I used Traditore, so instead of WordPress.org, please look elsewhere for the translations. And for this, we built a little helper script. Um, to use it, you just specify the plugin slug and point it to the API of Traditore where you can find the language packs. And if you need a visual re representation of this, um, all the websites now download things from either WordPress.org, uh, from the translation API there, or from the Traditore, where we and our clients can um, update translations independently of our development cycle. So if you compare uh, the options from before, again, we now have WordPress.org and Traditoria on the left side with the same benefits, they're easy to use. We have a translation platform where we can collaborate with others and we benefit from WordPress's just-in-time loading of translations. And everything is as automated as possible. <coughs> of course, you don't have to use it. If you want to go the manual way to look for your private plugin with the complicated process and everything, it's fine. Um, but I think Tutorial is a good solution for that. And if you want to learn more about this whole workflow, I actually wrote a blog post about it. Um, you can find it on our company blog. It goes a bit more into detail, um, technical aspects of how everything works. And I'd also like to point out that everything we built uh, to make this happen is open source and available on GitHub. This way you can run your own translation platform uh, powered by WordPress. Uh, feel free to check it out, uh, ask questions, fork it, open issues, uh, create pull requests, whatever you want. So, uh, what I've shown you so far um, just the current state of the WordPress internalization landscape. Uh, there are still many things that we can and should change. Uh, first, uh, uh, first of all, I want to make Traditory even better. Um, the plugin is yet fully finished. Um, it worked really well, but the next step is to fix some bug, makes it easier to use, uh, not only with GitHub projects, but with GitLab or Bitbucket. And we'll also work on uh, improving documentation for the plugin as well. The good thing is, Traditory gives us a good idea of things that we can change elsewhere. So whenever we see fit, uh, we try to suggest these changes uh, also to the WordPress.org translation platform. Uh, since both tools use Glowpress under the hood, they're naturally um, very similar and share some of, uh, of the same code base. 
So one thing we're currently looking at is bringing this WPCLI command uh, I mentioned earlier to uh, WordPress.org as well because it works so much better than MakePod and other solutions. Another big thing that's around the corner is JavaScript internationalization. So as we all know, uh, WordPress is getting a new editor called Gutenberg, and the editor is almost entirely written in JavaScript, uh, which creates lots of new challenges for uh, internationalization purposes. So we'll have to see how we can best adapt our tooling to this new situation and make some changes to WordPress.org so you as a plugin developer can use uh, all the new things in your plugins as well. Alright, so I think there was lots of information to process so far. Um, I'll try to sum things up for a bit. So first, uh, I looked at the differences between uh, internationalization and localization. Uh, then I explained some of the efforts going into WordPress core uh, to improve these areas. And after that, I compared the workflows for internationalizing and localizing both public and private plugins. So where we could rely on WordPress.org to do all the heavy lifting for our public plugins, we had to follow manual, um, very, uh, lots of manual steps for our private plugins. And this starts with the string extraction and continues with the translation and translation loading parts. And so instead of having something that just works, um, there's a way more work available for private projects. Um, also, you don't benefit from the translator community on works.org. And in order to in an attempt to fix this, we created a tool called Traditorium, which is essentially works.org for everyone. So it's a combination of WordPress, WordPress, and WPCLI to help make this happen and automate all the steps you had to manually take before. It doesn't stop with Traditory though. Uh, there are lots of ways to further improve Traditory. Um, but we can also learn from these things and to um, 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 and help improve WordPress.org translation uh, the translation platform of WordPress.org uh, thanks to our learnings from Traditory. So a good example for this is JavaScript internationalization. Because we have this private platform, we can rapidly uh, iterate and find a solution that we can then port to WordPress.org. Because this is something that WordPress needs to figure out um, as a whole, as a community. Because at the end, all projects can benefit from this. All right, so with this, I'm finishing, finishing my talk today. Thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any any questions? Anything anything about Japan? Go demo. Ah, no. Go go. ありがとうございます。えっと、この国際化の自動的に翻訳する機能を使ってワードプレス以外のJavaScriptファイルを国際化するためのエクストラクションができるんでしょうか。Okay, so this is about uh, JavaScript internalization for non-WordPress files. Okay, so um, what we have right now in the WPCLI script, uh, it is extracts uh, strings from JavaScript files that use the WordPress, uh, or they use the same library as uh, Gutenberg does, where you have to say like underscore underscore functions. This already works. Um, if you're doing something else or like want to translate something that's not in WordPress, it's probably hard to, to do this. Or if you use, uh, let's say, I don't know, like a React component, does the translation. Um, but these are things that we still need to figure out. Like we don't have a um, fit for all solution for that yet, unfortunately. Hope that answers your question. So. Any any uh, any other questions? 
Um, I have a question. I have a question that throughout the story. Yes. Is there any uh, screenshots or capture of what you can see so you can screenshot us? <laughs> Uh, I don't have like a screenshot right now. Um, I mean, Tradutori works kind of in the background, right? Um, you just publish your change for your plugin to yeah. GitHub, yeah. And then it does everything else. The only things you see is Slack notifications and the translation platform, which is CloudPress, which looks like translator WordPress store. Oh, okay. That's the only point of interaction. Really. It's like a, a kind of WordPress made into for yeah. the translation. Yeah. Uh, right. Like works works in the shadows in the background. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any any other questions? Carl? Um, okay. Uh, that's it, I think. Um, Please give a big applause once more to Pascal. Uh, thank you for a great talk. Yes.